Hello, gorgeous, and welcome to day one of the Impactful Coach Experience. I am super excited to be here. We have got an incredible week of training lined up. By the end of this week, you're going to feel so clear, so confident to take your coaching to the next level, whether you're brand new to coaching or whether you're an old hand, but you're ready to go deeper and further and faster and bring all the magic into everything that you're doing. So, Good morning. I hope you're feeling amazing. I hope you're excited to dive into everything that I've got lined up for you this week. It is going to be a super powerful week. So much value is going to be shared and I really can't wait to take you on this journey. It is such a powerful journey and it is a journey that I am personally so incredibly passionate about, not only because it's absolutely transformed my life, but because I've seen it transform hundreds, if not thousands of other women's lives too. So I am so ready to do this with you. I'm going to try not to get too overexcited and talk too quickly as we dive into all the content. As you're joining me live, say hello. Let me see who's here. How are you feeling today? Are you excited? Are you ready to do this? I know some of you will be catching this on replay. So if you are catching the replay, I also just want to acknowledge you and say huge well done on catching up. And please do act as if you're live because that's how you're going to get the most from the experience. So those of you who are live with me, how are you? Are you ready to rock and roll this week? Oh my goodness, so many good mornings. Yes, it's amazing to see you all. So just before I dive into all of this, one thing that I would love for you to do for me is when I go live, I do it through um, a little app called StreamYard. So for me to be able to see your names as you comment and you pop up, I need you to do one little thing. And that is just above my head, I believe, up here somewhere. Um, there's a little uh, there's a little link or something that says give StreamYard permission um, to show your name or something like that. And that means that when you comment, I'll see your name. Otherwise, it says Facebook user. And I really like to be able to connect with you. I like to be able to get to see your comments as we go through the journey this week. I like to be able to kind of put a name to everything that you're sharing. So if you can do that, that would be incredible. I know for some people, I think it might be iPads or something or, or, or maybe Android devices. I'm not quite sure. For some people, it doesn't always work. Um, but if you can do that, sorry, I should have should have rolled my sleeves up before I got started, shouldn't I? Uh, but if you can do that, that would be amazing. It would be just un underneath my writing. So I've put day one, the impactful coach, and there's a little bit of blurb. If you just like stretch that, it should be in there. If you click it, um, it should let you do that. So if you can do that, that would be amazing. If you can't do it, don't panic. We'll, we're going to rock it anyway, and it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, Okay, Annabelle, Haley, Claire, good morning, Debs, Christina, um, all of you who are saying good morning, but I can't see your names. Mwah. Wow, we are in for a powerful week. Are you ready to rock this? I hope you've got pen and paper at the ready. Hope you've got a coffee so that you're comfortable. And I really just want to acknowledge you being here. You put in the time aside to go through this journey with me this week. My aim, my goal, my vision, for this space is to take you through a journey this week that's really going to step you into your next level around coaching. Whether for you, you're literally brand new. You might be thinking, I don't even know what coaching is. I don't even know if I want to go there, but I'm intrigued and I feel like there's something here that I want to explore. Or whether you've been in the coaching world for a while, but you want to go deeper. You really want to know what it means to be an impactful coach. Um, if you joined me on last night's live where we officially kicked off this challenge, you'll have heard me sharing about a new paradigm of coaching. I believe that coaching is such a powerful vehicle for change. Coaching and as an industry is thriving. It's the second fastest growing industry in the world. And this year alone, it is set to exceed $20 billion. So the coaching industry is thriving. It's booming. Um, everyone is starting to really understand the power of coaching. However, within that industry, not all coaches are the same. And we know this, right? We know that some coaches are stuck and struggling and, you know, really finding it difficult even to find clients at 50 pounds an hour, 60 pounds an hour, 70 pounds an hour. And then we have coaches 
who are operating in a totally different way. Coaches who are literally charging £100,000 for their coaching. Coaches who are in absolute abundance with the work that they do. Coaches who have clients on waiting lists for months, even years sometimes. And so you might well look, especially if you've, you've been in the coaching world and wonder, well, what is the difference? Why is it some people in the coaching industry industry are really struggling and others are literally thriving? I believe it comes down to a paradigm shift and I'm going to be sharing that with you this week. There are a few key elements that make all the difference between a struggling coach and a thriving coach. I'm going to be super clear as we go through this week, I'm going to make sure we dive into each and every one of those so that you really understand it for yourself. So whether you're already in the coaching industry or you're thinking about taking that leap, you're going to know how to do this in a way so that you can thrive, so that it can be an abundant journey, so that it can be be a fulfilling journey so that it can be something that you wake up each and every day really excited to do and so that you get to live this life for yourself too because as we build these beautiful coaching businesses I believe it's neither a selfless act nor a selfish act and what I mean by that is so often we've seen so many powerful women with incredible gifts over give and I think we as women know that we can overgive, right? We know that we can help people. We want to make a difference. We want to help. And those of you who are kind of pulled by coaching probably have this like innate within you, this this kind of need and want to help other people, especially when you know that you can. But what can happen in that space is that we can overgive because we we know that we can help. We feel the desire to help. And so we we give so much of ourselves. But unfortunately, when we do that and when we do it for a long period of time, we end up being empty. We end up emptying our own container and burning ourselves out. And that's not going to help anyone. Equally, we don't want to be in the selfish camp, right? We don't want to be taking the piss out of the people that we're working with. We want to honor our clients deeply. We want to be in full alignment with the work that we do. It's not just about getting rich quick. It's not just about earning the money and flying off. Um, I nearly said flying off on a yacht. Hmm. (laughs) Flying off on a jet or sailing away in a yacht. Um, It's about getting the balance. And I believe that there is a beautiful balance that we can really step into, a balance where absolutely we can give all of ourselves, but we can also receive richly for that work. That means no more broke coaches. It means no more overgiving. It means really honoring your own boundaries and holding your clients to the very highest version of themselves, recognizing the power, the magic, the potential that they have within them. So we're going to be diving into that and so much more this week. Who's excited? Are you ready? What I'd love for you to tell me before I even dive in, I'm going to do a quick bit of housekeeping, then we're going to dive into today's content. But the question I have for you before we begin is, where are you on your coaching journey? Are you a newbie, brand new to this, just exploring it? Or are you a really competent, confident coach, but you're ready to take things even further? Type it in, let me have a look. Personally, I've been coaching for about 15 years now. My journey started when I was living in New Zealand. My kids were really tiny at the time. I'd left teaching and I was trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do. I'd moved to the other side of the world. I was feeling lost. I was feeling pretty overwhelmed with being a mom. I didn't know anyone and I literally felt like, oh my gosh, I'm starting life again. What am I going to do? And I stumbled across coaching. And I'll be honest, when I first discovered it, I was like, oh, maybe I can train as a coach, but actually I can fix me in the process <laughs> because I knew, to be quite honest, I was a hot mess. I'd been struggling with um, a bit of postnatal depression. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling overwhelmed um, and I had no idea what my future held. And so when I stepped into the coaching world, I was just trying to figure it out for me. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about how I was going to work with clients and what that could look like. And I certainly never considered for a moment that 15 years later, I could be here with the business that I have and been on the journey that I've been on like literally it's transformed my life so many times over and so I look at the power of coaching and it blows me away it blows me away because of one what it's allowed me to do in my own life but two because of 
of the way that it can literally transform the paths that we're on in our lives, both for you as the coach and for the clients that you're working with. And that's one of the reasons why I love coaching so much, because you get to grow and evolve and step into this fully while you hold such a powerful space for your clients so they get to evolve and grow and create incredible things for their lives too. So it's this beautiful balance. And actually, um, the more you know, the more you show up and the more you learn to hold that powerful space, the more your life transforms and the more powerful you also get to be as a coach. And so the two grow and grow and grow together. And it's the most incredible transformation and the most incredible journey to be on. Um, I'm just having a little look at your comments. Some of you are just starting, just beginning. I uh, feel like you're at the beginning of your business, but you've been coaching for a decade. I absolutely understand what you mean by that because that was the case for me. I'd been coaching for a long time before I really felt like I got into building the business of my dreams and really stepping into my power as a coach. Um, you haven't yet started yet, but you would love to be a great coach. You trained as a counsellor, amazing, uh, and was a group facilitator for women, postnatal depression. There you go. I'm now retired, but still help others. Coaching speaks to me. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So wherever you're at, that you're going to have so much to take away from this week. I fully acknowledge that this week, while this experience is free it's not going to cost you a penny and there's no kind of hidden hidden cost or anything that's going to be happening it is going to cost you your time and time is our most precious commodity so here's the thing that I'd like you to do for yourself and for me right now I'd like you to commit to this journey I'd like you to commit to showing up and going through the training with me this week. But not only that, I'd like you to commit to doing the work too, because I want to see you get the results. I want to see you move forward. If you're spending your time with me here this week, let's make that time count. Let's make it really a powerful experience where you feel yourself move forward where you feel that next level of clarity and confidence and certainty in your own coaching journey, where you learn, where you evolve, where you're able to take this and actually practically put it into action for yourself. So you feel that huge step forward. So you feel yourself elevate within yourself. I'm going to be holding the energy this week that you can attune to, to really stepping into your coaching in a powerful way, wherever you are on this journey. And I'm really going to be teaching you the difference between your average coach and being an impactful coach, because the two are actually miles apart. I'm going to be sharing some things that I've learned on my own coaching journey that have been a game changer for me and a game changer for my clients. I'm going to make sure that you know how you can utilize this within your own coaching business as you begin to move forwards. Now, later in the week, I will be opening up an opportunity for those of you who decide you want to take the next step with me and work with me. However, this is not about pushy sales. This is not about anything else. The opportunity is going to be there for those of you who are excited to continue the journey after this week. The final thing that I need to just share around that is usually next week, seven days after we begin, I normally do a big masterclass. It's free um, and it's the icing on top of the cake. We take everything that I've learned this week and I teach you something that's going to really help you take it next level. Now, next week is actually, I believe, the Queen's funeral. So we're not going to do it on the Monday because that would just not be right. OK, <laughs> so I'm sure you all agree. So we're going to do it next Tuesday instead. So we're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here live at 1030 each morning. After I've been live, you're going to get a workbook so that you can take the action and implement this for yourself. I'd love for you to share your workbook in the group. Um, and if you do so, you'll be in to win one of the prizes because we've got a competition running this week, as we always do. And then next Tuesday, the icing on the cake is going to be a super duper masterclass. It's not going to be here. It's going to be on Zoom. And I'll be telling you about how you can register for that as we go through the week. Does that make sense? And so the final thing to share is the details for the competition, because I love to run a little competition as we go through our week's experience. So three simple things for you to do if you'd be like, if you'd be like, if you'd like to be in to win one of the prizes. Number one, super simple. Give each of these videos a little love heart. Just give it a little part because then I can see who's seen it. I've got a bit of an idea as who's going through the journey with me this week. Not only that, but it helps activate the Facebook 
algorithm. So um, you'll be helping me, but you'll also be helping everyone else in the group to actually see this content. And I want to make sure that everyone gets to see it. So that's the first thing. Give each video a little love heart. Um, second thing, again, super simple. I'd love for you to actually comment on the live videos as we go through this. Now, this isn't just for me. It's because um, there's been so much evidence um, and so many studies done on when you learn actively, you retain more of the information. And that's what we want to do, right? So I don't want you just to sit back and kind of let this move through you and then forget it all 10 minutes later. I want you to be learning actively with me. So um, comment when I ask questions, share your thoughts, give me your aha moments. Let's do this together. And also, I've got to be honest, it inspires me as I see your comments, as I see you listening to me, as I see you kind of taking part and thinking about this, it really helps step me into that next level energy too. So that's the second thing. Comment in the comment box, even if usually you're a bit of a lurker, so maybe you don't always um, comment in groups, maybe you're the person who stays a bit quieter. I've done that before as well, so we've got no problems with lurkers, but for this week, choose not to be a lurker. Choose to show up fully, choose to shine brightly, choose to be really active as we go through this journey. And then the third thing, and this is the important bit, is do the daily task and share it in the group. So there's going to be a thread that goes into the group that you share your task on. So each day there'll be a day one task thread. You do your task, you share it in there, you can do it as a photograph or you can copy and paste it however you want to do it. Me and my team will read that, we'll comment on it, so we'll give you feedback around it, which I think is beautiful. And also, you'll inspire everyone else in the group to do the same. So they're the three simple things to be into in the competition. There are always beautiful prizes. I give away some of my paid programs worth £500, so you could be lucky enough to win one of those. Um, I've also got beautiful notebooks and other things that I uh, that will be giving away to some people. So if you like yourself a little bit of stationery, um, we've got beautiful, beautiful notebooks and all kinds of things that are available as prizes. So on that note, are you ready to do this? Give me a little like, oh yes. Um, I'm ready to do this. So uh, let me just check my notes. I think I've shared all of that. Firstly, first question over to you. What does coaching mean to you? What is coaching? We're here about to dive into the impactful coach experience, but what is coaching? When I began my own coaching journey, I've got to be honest, I didn't really have a clue what it was. Yes, I knew it was about personal development. Yes, I knew it was about asking questions. Yes, I understood that there was a level of accountability involved. All right, so if I say I'm going to do this thing, this coach is going to make sure that I do it. Yes, I understood that it was about goal setting. But to be honest, I think that's pretty much all. I also, though, had this deep feeling that maybe somehow coaching could fix me. <laughs> It would just sort me out. It would solve my problems. It would fix me and turn me into this person who was just super emotionally competent, that I'd be able to deal with the ups and downs. I'd just be like the Zen, like, hallelujah, person walking through life who had all her sorted out. Um, <laughs> and I was in for a real awakening. Because at that point, I had no idea about all the different levels that we have within us. I had no idea about the depth. And I really didn't understand the secret of embodiment, the secret of not just knowing something, but absolutely living it. And I've got to be honest, it took me a number of years as a coach before I discovered that secret. For a long, long time in my own coaching business, um, I... My, my focus was asking the right questions, as I've been taught to do, holding space for my clients to explore, as I've been taught to do, goal setting, utilizing tools, doing all of these things. But for me, during that whole journey, it was all here. It was all in my head. It was all in a real masculine paradigm. It was thinking, thinking, thinking. And what I had no idea at the time that I was missing was the being. 
It was the embodiment. It was the living it. It was the really holding that energetic frequency, really tapping into the magic of it all. And it took me a long, long time before I realized that. I had a lot of coaches myself before I realized, and I had a coach that was incredibly powerful, and suddenly it was like, boom, this is what coaching is. And so as we go through this week, I want to help you understand the difference the difference between the different types of coaching available. On the surface level, there are four types of coaching. Did you know this? Four types of coaching. Um, so feel free to type this in if you think you might know what the four types of coaching are. By the way, I'm re I can kind of see your thoughts around what coaching is pop up, which is beautiful, by the way. Well done. And yes, you're all right. <laughs> you're all correct. It's all of these things. It's so much, right? It's so, so much and such a powerful vehicle for creating next level change, for facilitating transformations for so I've got like what's my hair doing um for embodiment for living our best life for discovering the new parts of ourselves obviously there are so many different areas that we know we can coach in we've got health coaching we've got wealth coaching we've got business coaching we've got relationship coaching we've got spiritual coaching we've got all of the things so coaching is huge it's a huge beautiful powerful container but within this container, I believe there are four levels of coaching. The first level of coaching in its most simple form is simply an ear to listen to. And most people who come into the coaching world have already been doing this before they begin coaching. In fact, this is one of the things that draws them to coaching because friends and family will have made comments like, oh, like you're so easy to talk to. Or, oh my God, I feel so comfortable sharing things with you. Or maybe you have the experience of wherever you go, strangers just stop and like tell you their whole life stories and like share it all right. And so you might find that just naturally you are an ear to listen to, that people feel safe sharing with you, that people come to you for advice and to talk things through. Um, and that, as I say, like strangers literally like pour their hearts out to you and you're, and you're a bit like, I don't know why this always happens to me, but clearly there's something there. So how many of you have already had that experience, right? Where literally, you know, everyone comes to you, which is a beautiful thing. It's, it's an, it feels very honoring to be able to do that. But sometimes it can get a bit much, right? I know that there was one point in my life where I felt like I was just the go-to person where everyone came to me all the time. And it was like, whoa, like, hang on. Like, where's the balance in relationships gone? And what's going on here? And I felt like I just was attracting everyone all the time who wanted to tell me all their problems and wanted me to try and fix it for them. And I realized at the time that some of that was about my own energy, but some of it was also about the fact that intuitively I could see what was going on with people. Intuitively, I would ask a question that like triggered them to be like, blah, 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 blah. so first level of coaching is an ear to listen to. And I bet nearly every single one of you have been the ear to listen to and naturally attracted people who want to share and talk to you um, over your life, perhaps more now, but maybe from like being as teeny tiny as you can remember. Um, lots of you are saying yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Totally relate to it. Yes. So that's level one. Level two is the accountability coach. It can be exhausting, Mar Marcella, Marcella or Marcella, I'm not quite sure, a beautiful name though. Um, it can be absolutely exhausting. So level two is the accountability coach. So the accountability coach is really what it says on the tin, the coach who holds you accountable. You say you're going to do something and it's like, yes, I'm going to do it. So for example, um, Weight Watchers, like they wouldn't call themselves coaches or maybe they do. I've never, I've never actually been, so I couldn't honestly tell you that. But they, to me, seem like they would fit the role of an accountability coach a little bit. Even fitness instructors, personal trainers fit the role of accountability coaches to some extent because you go and you say, hey, this is what I want to achieve. And you will check in with them perhaps every week um, to help you achieve that thing, to keep you moving forwards, to make sure you don't fall off the wagon and they hold you accountable and they might weigh you or measure you or talk about whatever it is. There's obviously like all kinds. Of, it's not just in the fitness world and, and weight loss world, but they were just easy, easy um, options and easy examples. Um, but the accountability coach listens 
helps you figure out what you want and holds you accountable to achieving that. So how many of you have had the experience of being an accountability coach? And again, this can be great. Being an accountability coach is incredible while your clients get results. But if you have clients who aren't getting results, what can happen as a, an accountability coach is you can start questioning yourself. Hang on a minute. Why Why isn't this person getting results? Why is it this person and this person saw and they do incredibly well? And I feel really good about myself because look what I've helped them to achieve. But then this person and this person aren't moving forwards. And that impacts me. And I don't feel great about myself because... What am I doing wrong? Am I not good enough? Like, what am I lacking in my coaching? And so accountability coaching can be a bit of a double-sided coin. In some ways, with those clients who are soaring, it can feel like, yes, I've got this. This is amazing. But when you have clients who hit blocks or just don't move forwards, it can be incredibly frustrating. And 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 because of the container that it is, because it's quite a, um, it's not really a deep container, you can't necessarily go there enough to make those deeper changes to really help support those huge transformations that happen on a much deeper more subconscious level so that's level two the accountability coach level three is the trained coach so the trained coach is someone who's gone through some official coach training it might be with the ICF it might be with the coaching academy it might be something like that and I went through a number of these trainings and it was very much like this is how you coach these are the kind of questions that you ask and this is the way that it looks and these are the rules that you have to play inside and so trained coaching is incredible and it's powerful and I certainly learned so much in in all the training that I did and um, and then the coaching that I did in that space but I still felt like something was missing in playing inside these rules I felt like I was confined in some way um traditional coaching has the rules that you don't teach that you don't share that you don't um, bring your experience to the table the idea within the ICF and the trained coach world is that you ask the questions but you don't bring any of yourself to the table so you hold the space and you ask the questions but for me it felt like there was something missing here I was like hang on a minute as a coach and as, as the type of coaching I was doing, because this is this is going back many years now, but um, when, when I you know first kind of got into my vibe as a coach and I was going through this journey myself, um, I was actually a mum a mum coach. I was coaching new mums, and I was passionate about doing that because of my own journey. So I'd had two boys very quickly, not much time apart. I'd gone through postnatal depression. I'd I wondered who the heck I was and then I'd use, use coaching to rediscover myself and um, refine who I was and create a much happier life for myself, right? So I'd been through that journey and when these women were coming to me for coaching, I knew that I could go deeper and I knew that I could do more and I wanted to be able to tell stories and bring my, like bring my own experience to the table, not in a telling way, but also... I've always been deeply intuitive and I would know, I'd have nudges, I'd know like when this was happening or that was happening and I wanted to be able to really bring that into the coaching that I was doing because I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that there was more available. And so that leads us to level four of coaching. And level four of coaching for me is about being the impactful coach. And here's how being the impactful coach is different. Yes, it's about holding a powerful space for your clients. Yes, it's about asking really beautiful questions that help clients discover new parts of themselves and really understand what's going on on a deeper level. But it's also about allowing your intuition to guide you. It's also about having gone on this journey yourself, so knowing what it feels like to walk that walk. It's about you as a coach having already embodied this energy. So you can say to your clients without a shadow of a doubt, I have got you and you can do this. And you know that they can do this. There's no doubt. There's no question in your mind because you have done it. This is a pathway that you have walked in some way. And every single one of you, you might not notice it yet, but every single one of you have been on your own journey in your lifetime and you have your own unique, beautiful wisdom, guidance, 
experiences that have helped you get to where you are now. Now, some of you might not know that yet. You might be like, oh, Claire, like, but I don't, I haven't done anything. Or no, why would anyone want to do this with me? Because, and that's what ego says, right? Ego will throw that up at us. As we go through this week, we're going to find your magic. We're going to unleash that magic. We're going to pull it out of you so you can really see where your power is as a coach. And I guarantee you, I know for sure that every single one of you here has that magic within you. And it's about finding that and unleashing that. And when you give yourself permission to do that, and when you learn how to do that, it's a little bit of an art form really, and you learn how to do it in a powerful way that isn't about oversharing, it isn't about your agenda, but it's about dancing with all the different tools and experience and wisdom and, and energy and everything else that you bring to the table. Suddenly, your power as a coach grows and suddenly you can facilitate much bigger transformations and suddenly you'll feel next level clients coming to you being magnetized to you people talking about how incredible you are as a coach having these huge breakthroughs really kind of moving forwards quickly and deeply and you will feel that depth within yourself just be just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it will transform your life and it will transform the lives of the people that you work with. So this is the pathway of the impactful coach. And yes, it's an art form, but yes, it's available for every single person who desires it. And the fact that you desire it inside of yourself says that it is here and available for you. One of the things that I've realized on my own journey and through coaching hundreds and hundreds of women at this point is that you only desire a thing if it's available, if it's in your realm of possibility. So the fact that you desire it, the fact that it's calling to you, the fact that you feel that want for more, that there's something in this, even if you don't know exactly what it is yet, says you have this within you and it's time to pull it out. It's time to say yes. It's time to step into it. It's time to discover it. It's time to play in all of that magic and let it transform your lives and every single life that you touch within this space. So are you excited about stepping into and onto your journey as an impactful coach? <laughs> now's the time to do it right so what I want to do with you today is I want to begin by going through nine attributes to the impactful coach because how can we be an impactful coach if we don't really understand what it is if we don't feel it if we aren't able to step into that energetic frequency whereby we experience it because this is the difference about an impactful coach it's experiential you're actually living it it's not the old paradigm of coaching which is oh let's just do goal setting let's just move forwards let's just achieve things let's just change things this is about really stepping into your life more fully it's about living in the moment. It's about dancing in the magic. It's about how you get to walk this journey and enjoy every single moment of it as you go, knowing that, of course, you're going to achieve these things because you have unlimited potential inside of you. And that's probably the one thing that I haven't touched on yet that I really, really want to share, because, again, this, I believe, is a core difference in the impactful coach, because the impactful coach 100% believes in the limitlessness of herself and of her clients. It's only when you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that you can achieve your dreams, that your clients can achieve your dreams, that you activate this energy within you. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't wobble because we're all human, right? So our human selves will have our wobbles. It will have our doubts. It will have our down days. I've got to be honest with you. Friday was a down day for me because I'd been to the dentist. I had a horrible experience and I was pretty much like everything was just poop. So um, on Friday, I was like, um, I was like angry and upset and sad and all of the feelings happening. And so Friday was me being very much in my human human self. Um, does that mean that I'm not able to be an impactful coach? Hell no, because most of the time I'm able to step into the magic, but I'm also human. So I don't want you to put being an impactful coach up on a pedestal. It's something that each and every one of you can do. 
and you will have already experienced it in little births. You probably you'll have, you'll have noticed this magic in parts of your life already. As an impactful coach, you're still human. And so it's learning to walk this walk by which we take one step forward in our humanness and our human will have doubts and our human has ego and our human has days where things just aren't working out. But then we take the next step forward as that next level version of us fully in our power, really living in that magic, stepping into the highest possible version of ourselves. And you know that version of you. You know when you have that fire inside you, when you're just lit up and shining so brightly, when you're filled with belief and enthusiasm and inspiration, and you're just like, oh my God, like, yes, yes, yes. And often, yes, the next step, the human might come in and wobble you a little bit, But the more we learn to do this walk, the more we learn to manage ourselves in a really beautiful way, the more we step into this higher next level version of ourselves and we begin to truly embrace and embody this limitless possibility that we each have available to us. And it's about um, how we choose to live our life. It's about taking back our sovereignty. It's about recognizing that if we can dream it, we can do it. And shushing those voices that we might live inside of us or might live outside of us that says but who are you to do this it's not possible don't be silly what about the economy and all of those are the things that can pull you down and push you out of your power so as an impactful coach first and foremost you need to learn and I'm going to help you learn how to embody this energy for yourself so that you can then tap into this and truly hold it for any and every client that you work with to facilitate transformational breakthroughs. So on that note, let's dive into the nine attributes of the impactful coach. Are you ready? You can feel your own energy and excitement rising already. Yes, very excited for sure. Yay! Um, I felt for years I'm not coaching properly. Now I realized I hadn't accepted that my way is awesome. Beautiful, Deb. That's incredible. Uh, I feel teary as I've been there much of my time counseling. Wow, powerful. Yes. Okay. So number one is an impactful coach. And this is what I've just talked about a little bit. An impactful coach sees and believes in limitless potential in herself and in her clients. Now, I imagine there might be many of you who are thinking, ooh, I can believe in people's limitlessness, other people's limitlessness, but do you believe in your own? I think, I don't only think, I truly believe that if we can't see the possibility, the magic that we hold within ourselves, there is a limit on the magic and the possibility that we can see within others when you've achieved something no matter what it is whether it was you know dropping five dress sizes whether it was overcoming cancer whether it was building your own business whether it was stepping into your spiritual spirituality in a really incredible way whether it was becoming truly confident in the woman that you are whether it was getting pregnant whether like whatever it might have been right the things that you've achieved the things that you've done in your life if once you've achieved that thing once you've done it and you've done it for yourself you can look at other people and say I know that you can do this too so an impactful coach is able to tap into that limitless possibility. She's able to look at her clients, listen to their desires and say, 100 percent, you have you can do this. I have got you and you can do this. Like I see this magic. I feel this potential like tingling in my fingers without a shadow of a doubt. Let's do it. And I'm here every single step by your side as you create this magic. So the impactful coach is able to hold that possibility. And I learned this that, that slightly the hard way, right? I had a number of coaches who didn't necessarily believe in me before I had the coach who was like, Claire, like, what are you talking about? The magic is inside of you. Like, I see you. And she saw me in a way that allowed me to see myself. And it was a game changer. Before that, I'd had coaches who would say things like, um, 
Here's an example. I had one coach and I'd been talking to her about how I wanted to build a six figure business, but I wanted to do it from a space of heart. I wanted to do it really caring about my clients. And she said to me, Claire, you can't do that. You either are going to have to build a heart led business and stay broke broke or you're going to have to get your shit together become a businesswoman and hit the six figures and I remember at the time being like it was like someone like broke my heart and I was like what surely not surely that's not possible but she rocked me like it was it was in in many ways it was a beautiful experience because it helped me find my own belief around that and realize that absolutely hell yes I can um and if anything it gave me the fire inside of me to go out and kind of show her because after I kind of pulled myself off the floor I was a bit like all right I'm gonna show you um now obviously that was a long time ago and the paradigm about building heart-led businesses has really changed now and there are so many women who have done that and it's incredible to see it I've done that in my own business and I've supported other women in doing in that so it is no longer a question but at the time when coaching was newer and I was at the beginning of my own journey that was like whoa and when I eventually had the coach who really held a powerful space who was like Claire like one, not only can you achieve that, but you can achieve so much more. She was like, Claire, you are magic. Don't you see your magic? Like you're playing small. You are holding yourself back. Like there is so much more inside of you. Like together, we are going to unleash this. I was like, and it lit me up in a way and it lit that fire inside of me and it helped me. She basically held that space for me. She held the belief in my limitlessness until I could believe it myself. And this is what makes an impactful coach. Your ability to hold that space, to know that your client is limitless, to know that she or he can achieve everything that they desire until they believe it themselves. Okay, so that's number one, limitless potential. Number two, she dares to dream big for herself and for her clients, right? There is nothing worse than a coach who says, oh no, that might be stretching yourself a little bit, or do you really think that's possible? Or a coach who doesn't really believe that you can achieve the things that you say you're gonna do, right? So we have to be able to, as coaches, dream big for ourselves. And when I say dream big for ourselves, I'm not, everyone can have their own unique dream. Right? When I'm talking about dreaming big, I'm not saying it's got to be like a seven or eight figure business that you're building, that you've got to buy this like big posh house, that you've got to like have a jet that you um, fly around the world on. Like some people will want that. And if you want that, then hell yes, own it. But there are lots of people who don't want that. So dreaming big is really about dreaming big, but fine in your dream in the things that you truly desire, in the life that truly lights you up? Like, what is it that you want to be doing with your time on this planet? What are the things that you want to be experiencing, that you want to be living? Like, some of the things that light me up the most, are, well, a perfect example is this summer. I love, love, love one of my favorite things in the world is there's a little place in Spain right on the beach. It's a campsite, literally right on the beach. I literally camp out like my little two-man tent. <laughs> um, and I go there with the kids. My two older boys didn't want to go this year because they've got a bit older now. But me and my daughter like rocked up. We put our tent up. The sea was like crashing just on the other side of the beach from us. It was properly tuned into nature. You know, we would we would sleep with the tent doors open and like looking up at the star in the sky. Like that, that for me is like magic. That is one of the things that I absolutely love. Yes, I love a bit of luxury. I love five-star hotels and I love travel, but I also absolutely adore my little magic place in Spain where I put up the little tent and we just live connected to nature for, for a period of time. So dreaming big, when I say dreaming big, it doesn't mean someone else's dreams. It means giving yourself permission to fully own your dreams and to stretch them even bigger, even further than you imagine, but in a way that's fully aligned for you. So that when you see a client, you know if they're playing small, because this is something that you'll see clients do again and again and again. You'll say, so what is it? What do you actually desire? What do you actually want? And they'll say, well, if I could just blah, 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 then I'd be really happy. And it's like, Hmm. if you could just, yeah, absolutely, 
but I think there's something more. There is something more. What is that something more? What's the thing that actually you truly desire, but you're almost scared to say out loud because it feels so big, because it feels like, oh, who am I to do that? Who am I to experience that? Really, is that possible? So we shy away from it. We diminish ourselves. We maybe don't fully own it. You need to be able to own all those parts of you and give yourself permission to see them so that you see it when a client is playing small. Number three, she reads beneath the words and hears the unsaid. So this is where we tap into our intuition. I think this is one of the things where we as female coaches are able to do something that most male coaches aren't. I believe that as women, we have natural, deep intuition. Now, I'm not saying that men aren't intuitive. Yes, they are, and they have different levels of intuition. But I also believe that women have a deeper level of intuition, and I believe that every single woman has that intuition inside of herself. And I believe that this is our internal guiding system. And I think that when we give ourselves permission to tap into our own intuition, to trust our own intuition, to bring it about in our own lives, but then take it further and actually give ourselves permission to bring it into our coaching, you're going to see the magic happen. Because when you speak that thing that you intuitively know and your client goes, that's it you're gonna feel tingles and it's magical. And it doesn't happen every single session, but as an impactful coach, you're gonna have those experiences again and again and again. And it doesn't come from asking the powerful questions, it comes from knowing, a deep knowing. And you might not know where that knowing comes from, but it's that intuition. And so the more that we can build our own intuition and trust it and allow it into our coaching, the more powerful the container we can hold. Um, number four is she can coach bravely. So many coaches hold back from coaching fully because they're scared to upset people. So coaching bravely is about daring to ask the questions that others won't. It's not about skirting around the thing like, oh, 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 she's saying this thing and it feels a bit, oh, I don't want to say the wrong thing. So it's going, no, I trust myself to ask the difficult questions to ask the questions that most people will probably shy away from. But I'm going to be here because I am here for my coachee 100%. And therefore, it is my role to ask the difficult questions. I am going to coach bravely because I am here to support my client fully. So coaching bravely is a huge thing that most people avoid doing, most coaches avoid doing, because they're scared of messing it up. They're scared of it being icky. They're scared of overstepping that mark. And let's be honest, those of you who are English, um, there's a thing here in England, which is like, oh, don't ask too many questions. Don't be nosy. Don't go. Don't prod where you're not meant to. And so many people bring this into their coaching and it limits the coaching that you do. So daring to coach bravely means asking the questions that others dare ask. It means not thinking, oh, like I better not ask that or it's perhaps not my space. Like you are there to hold a powerful space. So coaching bravely, asking the questions, daring to go where others won't. Number five, she leads herself first. Leadership is key. Leadership is queen. But so often when we think about leadership, we think about leadership in the corporate capacity and we think about leading others. But here's the thing. Leadership starts with ourselves. How the heck can we lead anyone else if we don't know how to lead ourselves? If we can't make empowered decisions, if we can't stand in our greatness, if we can't trust ourselves, if we can't take the action that we say we're going to take, how the heck can we lead others if we can't even get ourselves to do that, right? So she leads herself first. We look inside of ourselves and we get really freaking honest. Where do I lead myself well? Where do I show up for myself? Where am I a great leader of self? And where do I get to grow here? Because self-leadership is key. And if you're going to lead anyone else, you've got to learn how to do it for yourself 
first but most people want to avoid that bit right because actually leading yourself is the hard bit it's much easier to be able to look outside of yourself and be like I'm going to tell you all how you should be living your life and what you should be doing and it's much harder to actually be the living embodiment of that ourselves and we just need to look around the world at the leaders of the world right now (laughs) I'm not going to say too much there but we look around at the leaders of the world right now and what's missing self-leadership Self-leadership is missing hugely. So if you are the woman who can lead herself first, that is magnetic. It is magnetic. It is a game changer. It means that you are going to stand out from everyone else. You're going to stand out from the crowd because it is such a missing piece in society right now. So absolutely. How can you lead others if you can't lead yourself? The impactful coach knows how to lead herself. She's not perfect. This is not about being perfect. This is not about not messing up. It's not about putting yourself on a pedestal and beating yourself up if you don't get it right. But it's having that sense of self-awareness. It's being honest with yourself. It's having a level of consciousness. It's having accountability to yourself. It is br- It's walking your talk and practicing what you preach. It's not asking others to do anything that you wouldn't do yourself. So self-leadership, absolutely key when it comes to um, being the impactful coach. And this is a game changer because you will find, and, and you might have even experienced this yourself, there's nothing worse than a coach who does not lead herself, who is not fully embodying everything and says you should go and do or give you tasks to do. And you know she's not doing it herself. And it's like, hell no. Don't you go telling me to do this when I can see very clearly that you're not. Like I just think about, <laughs> like as I say this, I think about like the health ministers around the world. I don't know I don't know if you've seen this, but there was a picture. I saw this picture the other day and it was like um, health ministers around the world. And it had like the health minister of um, Canada and the health minister of America and the health minister of England. And it's like um, the health minister of China. And it was like, these these are the people who are taking care of our health people and it's like ha what are you kidding me so um so yeah i'm i'm <laughs> so passionate about self leadership and it doesn't come easily it's been a huge journey for me to learn to lead myself in my 20s no in my 30s Finally, in my 40s, I reckon that I've like nailed it. I feel like finally, like I've grasped this and I'm able to do this. And that is not saying I'm there yet. It's an ever evolving journey, right? So there's always a new level and always deeper that we can drop. But I feel like finally, I've learned how to step into this in a way that um, I, I, well, not that I just couldn't before, but I didn't even have the consciousness around it to be able to do before, because unfortunately, the role models are missing in our world quite often to, to for, even to recognize this okay so this is number five number six is she can balance gratitude and desire within herself tell me if this resonates for you because this this was a huge part of my journey and this was a part that I didn't even realize was causing issues in my life for a long time so I've always been driven I've always been a bit competitive I've always been the person who was like, I'm going to show them. Um, So I've always had that natural drive and ambition inside of me. But, and drive and ambition is a beautiful thing, right? We don't want to like diss drive and ambition. It's beautiful. But if you are driven and if you have a vision and if you're like, yes, go, 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 then you're going to have a natural tendency to goal hop. And what I mean by goal hopping is you have a goal, you're like, yes, this is a thing. And the moment you get to that thing, and maybe even before you do, next goal, push again, next goal, push again, next goal, push again, next goal, push, go, boom, 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 boom. Now, that can feel exciting. And you're probably living a life that is very adrenaline filled because it's like, ah, I'm the next, yeah, I'm the next, I'm the next, right? But unfortunately, it's very damn unfulfilling 
Because if you're constantly just striving for the next thing, you're never in real gratitude for what you have. And this is one of the big, big issues in our society right now. Everyone wants more and everyone's forgetting to actually enjoy the thing that they have. So perfect example, um, and actually, I've I've seen this, I've, I've experienced this, I've been this myself, right? So if you if you recognize this within yourself, like we don't need to beat ourselves up around, it's like, oh, that's interesting. I might have been doing that myself. Um, so let me give you an example. You go shopping, you see a bag, a beautiful designer bag that you really want. You're like, oh my God, that bag feels like I just need it in my life. That is the bag that's going to help me be the next level version of me. I'm just going to feel so confident when I walk down the street with that bag. It's just beautiful. I want to put all my things in it. Like, oh. And so you think about the bag. You dream about the bag. Eventually, you go to the shop and you get the bag. And you're excited about it. You unwrap it. You take it home. You put your stuff in it. And then a week later, you go shopping and you're like, oh, those shoes. I just need those shoes. And it's like, hang on a minute. We've just got, we've just got a bag. Like, why are, we, why are we already now obsessing about the shoes? We've just got the bag that you said was going to change your life and be the next level you. And like, it's like, oh, yeah, you've got the bag around you. But where's, it, where's the enjoyment of that bag? Because you're already focusing on the next thing. We do this in our businesses, we do it in our lives, we do it with our health, we do it with our money, we do it like we do it with our relationships. If, if you do this in one place, you probably do this in all places. And so we are quite, we're good at having that desire and desire I think is a beautiful thing. Like I think it's incredible to have desire for things. I think that it's incredible to feel that one and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm so excited to have this thing or create this thing or become this thing or whatever it might be. I think that it's a beautiful thing and I think that it's one of the gifts to being human. But unless we can balance that desire with gratitude for having that thing once we have it and for having everything that we already have, it's a total waste. What is the point? Because you're never going to actually appreciate all of the magic that you're creating. You're just going to be focused on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I did this in my business, right? So there was a point in my business years ago where I decided I wanted to hit six figures. If I just had a six figure business, then it would be a real business. That's what I was telling myself. Like, I feel like uh, I'll be confident and people will take me seriously. Like when I have a six figure business, then I'm a real businesswoman. And so... I built my business to six figures. And guess what? The moment it was six figures, I was like, oh, but everyone else is doing more than six figures. And I can't let it drop below that. So I need to have like, okay, in the next six months, I need to make sure I'm hitting 150,000, not just 100,000. Let's make it 150,000. And then it was like, oh, but that's not enough because look at all these people earning seven figures. Like, oh my God, I need to like be making 200,000 a year in my business. And this thing grew arms and legs a little bit. And while it was exciting and incredible to be able to grow my business and work with the women that I supported and do all these things, there was a part of me that wasn't really fully in gratitude for what I was creating and instead was just going for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And so when I discovered this, it was like, whew, if I stay on this roller coaster, I'm never going to fully appreciate what I've got. I realized I could build an eight figure business and not really enjoy the magic of it, Re not really be fully conscious of the impact it was having every single day. And this is, by the way, when She Impacts the World came about, when I had this realization that it wasn't just about the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and growing and growing and growing. And that actually it was like, whoa, what are my values? And what's the impact? What are your values? And what is the impact you want to create in this business that you're building? These are the key things that we forget about, that we lose sight of, that make all the difference. So we need to learn now, not later, not when we're there, not when we've hit those goals, but now we need to learn to walk one step in gratitude and one step in desire so we have that healthy balance within ourselves so that we enjoy the journey as we're moving forwards. Because if we can't do it, we're not going to be able to support clients in doing it. And then they're going to be on this unfulfilling treadmill 
are forever trying to move forwards without really appreciating everything that they've already got and without really celebrating all the things that they do achieve when they're with you. And we want clients who celebrate their wins. We want clients who see the journey that they're on and enjoy that journey and really embrace it and really embody it and are really like, oh my God, this is like the most incredible journey ever because that's going to give you a fulfillment that is beyond belief as you build this business. So that was number six. Number seven, she has walked the path herself and supports her clients with deep confidence. So if I hadn't have built a multiple six-figure business, and actually I, a couple of weeks ago, I was looking at the figures um, that, the, that our business has brought in over the last couple of years, and it's way exceeded a million pounds now. And when I looked at that, it blew my mind. I was like, oh, how have I sold over like a million pounds worth of coaching? Like little me, how did I do that? It was a real kind of like aha moment for me. Um, but if I hadn't have done that, when women come to me and, and say, Claire, help me build my business, help me become an impactful coach, help me do these things, how can I really fully facilitate that change if I haven't done it myself? If I'm earning, if I'm selling my coaching at £50 a session and I'm earning £1,000 a month, can I really support other women in hitting six figures? Now, some people, and this is controversial, right, because some people will say, well, as a coach, yes, you can because it's just about asking the questions. But as a client, as a person being coached, don't you want to be coached by the person who's already done the thing, who's already achieved it? So when they say, you can do this, you know that they know that from experience rather than, oh yeah, you can do it. I can't, but that's all right. So I, and this will upset some people, <laughs> like, my beliefs on this, I know, will upset some people. But this is, this is what I've decided in the 15 years of my coaching and in seeing so many other women grow businesses, become coaches and do all these things. I do not truly believe that you can support someone in doing something that you haven't achieved for yourself. So you've walked this pathway and therefore you know that your clients can achieve this and your client has 100% trust in you because she or he knows that you have done this. And this is why you need to find your magic, the thing that you can help people with, that you have experience of. So if you've given birth, and if you've been through that experience, and if then you've been passionate about it and you've learned about other things, can you be a birth coach? Hell yes, you can. If you've lost weight or if you've improved your lifestyle, You've been through that evolution yourself. Can you help other people with it? Of course you can. If you have, if you were an alcoholic and you managed to break that and you've been teetotaled the past two years, are you able to coach other people through that? Hell yes. And how powerful is it when you have that client and they're like, I don't know if you can do this. And you're like, yes, you can. I've been there. I know what it's like. I did it. And so I absolutely know that you can do it. And I have got your back 100%. We're going to do this together. That is so powerful. So this is where each and every one of us has to find our magic. And I believe bring this to the table within the transformation we support in our clients. And this ties into, I'm not going to go too much into this now because we're going to cover this another day. We're going to talk about niching down as a coach um, and actually a different way of doing that that feels way more fulfilling. Because I think when we niche down, we put ourselves in a box. And I don't think that's the way that we should really build our businesses and step into the world as impactful coaches. I believe that it's actually about finding our magic and knowing what we want to help people to achieve and do and become and that's what it's about and that's not niching down that's about becoming all of ourselves unleashing the magic and holding a really powerful space for our clients who are walking that same pathway and you don't have to be a million miles down the road by the way because this is the other thing that's really important on my own coaching journey I'm going to take my, my business coaching as an example I didn't want to have a coach who was making eight figures when I just wanted to make 5K a month. I wanted a coach who was probably at the six figure mark, who knew it, who, who hadn't been far past that herself. So knew exactly what I was going through and could relate and could understand and could really support me. So this isn't about 
you being like, whoa, over there on your journey and your client here, this is about you being a few steps ahead, far enough ahead for you to have 100% belief in your client's ability, far enough ahead to have learned wisdom and embodied this yourself. But it does not mean that you need to be perfect. I can teach people in my business as my business continues to grow and evolve. And you can do this in whatever the coaching area is that you're going to dive into or have already dived into. Um, and then finally, up to more, she receives richly, this is number eight, big one, big, big, big one. In fact, this is perhaps one of the biggest ones. She receives richly for the work she does. That means no more undercharging. When, I'm going to have a sip of coffee before I share this with you. Because I can feel I'm going into like rant mode. We won't do rant mode. <laughs> okay. Here's what happens when you undercharge. When you lack belief in your coaching and in your ability to attract clients and hold that space for clients, you are going to charge less than your worth less than your value, less than you desire, less than you should be receiving for the work that you do. When you do that, what happens, and it doesn't happen straight away, but it does happen, is when you show up for that coaching conversation, you do not show up in your fullest power. Why don't you? Because this person, there's not an even distribution of giving and receiving happening you're receiving too little for what you're giving and so without even realizing it you are going to diminish what you're giving you're not actually going to bring all of your magic to the table even if you want to because there is an energetic law a universal law that says there's got to be balance in giving and receiving however when we stretch ourselves when we put a price on our coaching that stretches, it doesn't freak us out, but it stretches us and it makes us go, oh my God, I've got to really step up to the table because this is like, this is, this is a really incredible amount to be receiving for this work. Guess how you show up then? You show up as the next level you. You show up far more powerfully. I guarantee it, I've seen this so many times, I could not even begin to like break it down to you. But the, the, the truth is, and for now, I just want you to own this, we're gonna dive into charging and receiving and um, how, how you, like where you position yourself pricing wise with clients, we're gonna dive into all of that later on this week because it's a huge, huge area. But just for now, I just want you to take on board the fact that you need to receive richly for the work that you do, that you cannot be undercharging or it is going to make an impact on the power of that container that you're holding and how you show up energetically. That is going to have an impact on the results that client gets, on how they talk to you about other people and how magnetic you are as a coach. Because it, will, it puts a ceiling without you even realizing it subconsciously, it puts a ceiling on what you're available for. So we want to break through that ceiling and we want to really elevate ourselves and own our value and own our worth as coaches because too many women are undercharging in this space and it needs to change. It needs to change. It's one of the worst things we can possibly do. And we think that by undercharging, it's going to work. But actually, you'd be far better sorry, messing around my hair, you'd be far better having one coaching client paying you £5,000 a month than having lots of clients paying £50 a session. I guarantee it. Because then you're going to have time to really support that client. Then you're going to have time to work on yourself. Then you're going to have time to work on your business. Whereas if you're supporting client after client after client after client at $50 an hour, £50 an hour, it's going to they're not going to be as committed to the journey. So they're not going to see the same level of results. You're going to be drained and empty and you're not going to have a moment. You're going to burn out. So we need to change this paradigm of what we charge in the coaching space. And we need to step you into your value fully. It's not overcharging for the sake of overcharging. That is not what I'm talking about here. I do not like it when people are just like, yes, put your like put your prices up to £100,000. Why not? Because I'm like, no, please, like, let's, let's be sensible. Let this be a fair exchange. Um, so 
huge area. We're going to dive into this more this week. And lastly, number nine, she is pulled by a force greater than herself for the work that she does in the world. How many of you feel that pull? You might not know what it is. You just know there's something in you that's pulling you forward and you might not have real clarity on it yet, but you're like, you know what? I've just got to be doing this. In the early days of my coaching, there were so many times I thought, oh, I just should go back to teaching. It's easier. But I couldn't. I couldn't. Because I had this pull inside of me that just kept pulling me back and pulling me back and pulling me back and I couldn't ignore it. And even though there were times it felt hard, it meant I had to keep going because that pull was inside of me. And actually, I look back now and I'm so grateful for that pull because that pull has pulled me to a life that feels purposeful, to a life that feels aligned with my values, to a life where I feel like I'm actually getting to do the the thing that I was born to do. Like, this is my destiny type thing. Now, that might sound a little bit crazy and a little bit woo-woo, but that's literally how it feels. And I truly believe that as coaches, we have that thing inside of us that pulls us, that says, you're just going to have to do this. You were born for this, baby. And I think that when we give ourselves permission to be pulled instead of fighting it, suddenly things become easier. So this is what impactful coaching is really about. We're going to be unraveling this this week. I'm going to be teaching you how to charge well for the coaching that you do. I'm going to be helping you find that magic and pull it out of yourself. I'm going to be sharing how you position yourself powerfully so that you magnetize clients and how you build a coaching practice that is fully aligned to you, one that you wake up every morning super excited to dive into. Last thing for today, oh my gosh, where's the time? How have we been going for so long? I don't even know how that happens. Like I get into the zone, it's like, whoa, time gone. So last thing for today is there is a workbook and this is around um, moving you forwards. So there is a little thing in the world of coaching called alignment. People are always talking about alignment. Are you aligned? Well, Yes, you are aligned. You're always aligned to something. But are you aligned to the thing that you want to be aligned to? Are you aligned to your vision? Are you aligned to that next level version of you? So the place that I want to start this with you today is you aligning to the place that you do desire to go, because most of us are often aligning to the thing that we don't desire. So let's shift that today. Let's get clear, crystal clear on what is it you desire in this business that you're building, in this future that you're creating, into this woman that you are stepping into and naming and claiming as we walk this pathway, as we take this journey. What is it that you are aligning to? What is your vision? What do you desire? Now, I might actually, I'm either going to record it or I'll do it later later with you this week. I'm not going to do it now because we've gone over time already. But I want you to think about the breadcrumbs. Following the breadcrumbs, to your desire. So often, we might not be crystal clear on what we really want. What is that vision? Where am I going? I don't know. Some of you will know, some of you won't know. If you don't know, then the secret, the way that we do this, is that instead we follow the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are the things that you can identify. What are some of the things that you know you desire as that next level version of you that you want to create in this future that you're magically stepping into every single day? So it could be things like, I want to have space in my life so I can slow down and really enjoy things. I want to have an abundance of money. I want to wake up feeling purposeful, feeling excited about the clients I'm going to support. I want to be able to travel the world. I want to be able to hold space, in-person space for transformations. I want to, whatever it might be for you. These are the breadcrumbs. And this is where I want you to start with, this is today's task. I want you to discover your breadcrumbs that you are aligning yourself to, that are the key components, the key parts of this life that you're building for yourself. So this is step one of today's task. I'm actually just going to share my screen with you a second. Um, and I'm going to show you today's task so that I know that you've got it. So uh, there we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Can everyone see this? 
So dream life elements. This is following the breadcrumbs. I want you to make a list of all the elements for your next level aligned living. Uh, think of these things as parts of the desires that you want for this life that you're building for yourself. Things like time freedom, working the hours to suit you, making money, uh, eliminating your current income cap, feeling purposeful, waking up each day excited. These are the things. So your first step for today is you've got to write a list of these things just here. And then once you've started to tap into what those breadcrumbs are, what those dream life elements are, you're then going to write a letter from your future self. So it's the year 2025 and you're writing a letter to yourself today, talking about the life that you have created. Does that make sense? This is all going to be in the workbook. I'm going to send it out to you so you've got it. I'm going to stop sharing now. This is about setting in stone before we go any further this week. You not only being clear on why you're doing this and what you're creating and where this is all leading you. In You don't have to have the full picture. Let's at least have the breadcrumbs. And then you writing this letter from your future self, as your future self, back to the you today. What do you need to know? The reason that I think this is so powerful is I did this exercise myself a while ago. But I actually wrote a letter from today to my past self. I wrote a letter to the version of me in like 2015 who was going, oh, like, what's this business that I'm building? And is it going to work? And should I get a job? So I wrote a letter to her. And I wrote a letter to her saying, like, you are not going to believe where you've got to by 2022. You're going to be blown away by the business that you've built, by the women that you support, by everything that you've been able to create, by your own growth, by your own evolution, like like by all these elements. And I kind of went into detail and did this pop to myself. And I was like, oh, God, I wish I'd have got, I wish I had this letter in 2015 when I just had no idea what was going to happen. So we're going to kind of flip it the other way around. And you're going to write it as a version of you in 2025. The version of you who knows you can build the life that you desire. The version of you who know there is no limits to this, that you literally can desire it, you can create it, you can write it into reality. So this is your task for today. And as you do it, I really want you to feel the emotion because lots of you have probably played with the law of attraction, manifesting, and you, I'm sure you're probably well aware that the thing that creates your desires is not here, it's the feeling of it. It's not the knowing it, it's the feeling of it. So if you can tap into those feelings now, that abundance now, that excitement now, like that, whoa, kind of awe of look at what you've created. If you can tap into that now, you are literally writing it into reality. So they're your first two tasks for today. And if you want to go a little bit further, if you want to push yourself a little bit more, especially if you're brand new to coaching, then I'd love for you to also have a powerful conversation with someone in your family. I'd love for you to find out what are their breadcrumbs. Could be your husband, it could be one of your children, it could be your parents, it could be a friend. But I want you to just ask them, like just in a, not in a coachy way, but just in a conversational way. Hey, I did this task today, like looking at the breadcrumbs of like, what are the things that I desire in my life and where is that taking me and what is the vision? And it's really just got me thinking about how we don't talk about this very much. Like, what are your breadcrumbs? Have you, like, have you thought about it? What are your breadcrumbs? Do you have a clear vision of, like, what you're creating? Or do you at least know some elements of that? Just have a conversation and see how it feels. So that's the third thing, if you choose to do it. Now, when you've done that task, you can either take a photo of it if you're not very technical and you're like, I don't know how to download a file. That's OK. So take a photo of it and I want you to put it into today's task thread or you can upload it into there. And I would say take a moment to read everyone else's because when you read other people's letters from the 2025 version of themselves to today, you're going to be like, oh, this is amazing. Like you're all going to feel the magic of this inside of the group. So Done is better than perfect. Do not be a perfectionist about it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be beautifully written. Like, let it come out in whatever way it comes out for you. It can be messy writing. You can do it in whatever way works for you, right? So don't let perfectionism or procrastination hold you back from doing this. Do it and enjoy this. Do it for you. Do it for your future self. 
who is waiting for you to meet her and for you to step into her fully. I will then see you tomorrow at 10.30 for day two. Have you enjoyed today? Do you feel like you're clearer on what an impactful coach really is? And can you feel like, can you just feel a bit of that energy? Can you feel a bit of that magic? Can you feel this waiting for you? So this is literally just the beginning. We've hardly touched the surface. I know that I've already gone way over an hour for today, um, but we've hardly touched the surface. There is so much more that we're going to be covering this week. There is so much more depth. There is so much more specificity. There's going to be tasks that I'm going to be getting you to do that's really going to help you get crystal clear on all of these different parts and help you step into it in a huge, huge, incredibly impactful way. I have loved being here with you today. So thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for putting the time aside. Thank you for commenting and sharing. And there's been lots of comments that I haven't been able to even see because some of them have been quite big. So I'm going to go back after this. I'm going to read through these comments because I'm like, I'm actually desperate to read them and see what you've all been saying. So literally, I'm about to go and do that right now. Um, I can't wait to see your tasks come in. I want to read I want to read your 2025 letters to your current self. Like, I can't wait to see this. Um, and I will see you 10.30 tomorrow live. If you have people who you think will enjoy this, please do invite them in. It's not too late. Um, I think that's all I've got to share for now. So mwah, sending you so much love and I will see you tomorrow.